Epithelium, one of the four basic tissues, is a layer of cells that covers body surfaces, lines internal cavities, or forms the parenchyma of glands. Covering or lining epithelium is classified histologically according to the number of cell layers, simple or stratified, and by the shape of the surface cells, squamous, cuboidal, columnar, pseudostratified, or transitional. Let's look at each of these in more detail. Simple squamous epithelium is a single layer of flattened cells resting on a basement membrane and underlying connective tissue. Cells possess a thin cytoplasm and a central nucleus. Names of this epithelium depend on location. Simple squamous epithelium of the lining of the heart, blood vessels, and lymphatics is an endothelium. Mesothelium consists of simple squamous cells forming serous membranes lining body cavities. This distinction is important to pathologists because these cells behave differently in inflammation and tumor formation. Examples of simple squamous epithelium can be seen lining the thin loops of Henle in the kidney, or on the outer surface of organs where it's known as mesothelium, and lining the vasculature where it's referred to as endothelium. Consisting of one layer cells whose height roughly equals their width, simple cuboidal epithelium is found lining the ovarian surface, in renal tubules, thyroid follicles, exocrine glands, and parts of the eye. This epithelium is typically specialized for ion transport or secretion, and apical cell surfaces often have microvilli. Consisting of one-layer cells that are taller than they are wide, simple columnar cells look like closely packed, slender columns. Bases of cells rest on a basement membrane. Apical surfaces contact a lumen. The ovoid nucleus is centrally or basally located. This epithelium is mainly found in sites engaged in protection of wet surfaces, nutrient absorption, and secretion. Pseudostratified epithelium consists of more than one type of cell of varied size and shape. In sections, the nuclei usually appear at different levels, so two or three layers of crowded nuclei are seen. A basal layer belongs to replacement stem cells. More apical layers contain elongated nuclei of tall columnar cells, many of which may have cilia. Tall goblet cells secrete mucus. All cells contact an underlying basement membrane, but only some reach the free surface. Viewed by scanning EM, this fractured pseudostratified epithelium in the auditory tube contains ciliated columnar, goblet, and basal cells, all resting on a basement membrane and underlying bed of connective tissue called the lamina propria. Stratified squamous epithelium is a multi-layered epithelium that mainly protects against abrasion, dehydration, and invasion of pathogens. Its name derives from the shape of the outer layer of flattened cells. Two types exist, non-creatinized and keratinized. Non-creatinized stratified squamous epithelium lines most of the oral cavity, pharynx, epiglottis, vocal cords, esophagus, anal canal, vagina, parts of the male and female urethra, and cornea. In areas exposed to air and subject to abrasion, such as epidermis of skin, the surface layer consists of dead cells lacking nuclei and containing plates of the protein keratin, which strengthens and waterproofs the tissue. This keratinized stratified squamous epithelium also lines the tympanic membrane, parts of the oral cavity, and some mucocutaneous junctions including lips and distal anal canal. Thin skin, as seen here by TEM, contains multiple layers of keratinocytes. Basal cells are regenerative and rest on the basement membrane. Keratinocytes are interconnected by desmosomes and contain an extensive internal cytoskeleton. As cells mature, they are pushed to the surface where they form a hydrophobic layer of keratin. 
Stratified cuboidal and columnar epithelia have limited distribution in the adult. Both contain two or more layers of cells and are mainly protective and better suited than simple epithelia to withstand wear and tear. Stratified cuboidal epithelium, usually two layers of cells, lines ducts of sweat glands and other exocrine glands. Stratified columnar epithelium is in the pharynx and larynx, conjunctiva of the eyelids, major ducts of exocrine glands, and parts of the male urethra. Transitional epithelium is more aptly termed urothelium because it is restricted to lower parts of the urinary tract. The basal layer of cuboidal to columnar cells contacts the basement membrane and the most superficial layer consists of relatively large umbrella cells. Urothelium rapidly adapts to contraction and distension, changing from a tall epithelium with five to seven cell layers in the bladder's empty state to a thinner epithelium with only two or three cell layers in the distended state. All glands, classified as either exocrine or endocrine, develop from surface epithelium. Groups of surface cells differentiate, proliferate, and penetrate the underlying connective tissue. They synthesize and secrete extracellular products. Whereas endocrine glands pinch off and secrete into the bloodstream, exocrine glands maintain their connection to the surface epithelium. Exocrine glands connect to the surface by ducts, which take secretions to the surface or lumen. They may be classified by shape and arrangement of the secretory units as tubular, acinar, or mixed tubuloacinar. They are also grouped by structure of the duct system, simple or unbranched, or compound or branched, as in most organs, like in the pancreas. They are also classified by type of secretions, mucus, serous, or mixed seromucus. Serous cells produce watery secretions that typically contain enzymes. Cells occur in secretory acinar units of pure serous glands such as parotid, lacrimal gland, and exocrine pancreas, and in mixed seromucous glands. Tightly packed cells with dark stained cytoplasm surround a small lumen in the acinus. Seen here by TEM, serous cells are polarized and have basal, apical, and lateral domains, and a basal nucleus. Dense secretory vesicles and prominent rough ER are in their cytoplasm. Mucus, a secretion consisting of mucin, a highly viscous glycoprotein, protects and lubricates surfaces. Mucus producing cells occur either singly as goblet cells in epithelia of the digestive, respiratory, and reproductive tracts, or grouped as tubules or acini in many glands. Rough ER and the nucleus are basally located, and mucus containing secretory vesicles predominate in their apical cytoplasm. Each mammary gland has 12 to 20 irregular lobes, which radiate from the nipple and drain into it by separate lactiferous ducts. Each lobe is a separate compound tubuloalveolar gland, consisting of several smaller lobules, whose size, shape, and histologic structure change with age and functional status of the reproductive system. Active secretory cells are characterized by lipid and dense vesicles in their cytoplasm. Milk consists of water, lipids, lactose, and proteins, which are mainly casein, lactalbumin, and secretory IgA. Ultrastructure reveals a simple cuboidal epithelium in the smallest ducts closest to the secretory alveoli. Ductal cells have a single central nucleus and a cytoplasm packed with organelles. At the base of the epithelium are stellate-shaped contractile myoepithelial cells, which share a thin basement membrane with the more apical ductal cells. Two forms of breast cancer are depicted to the right, lobular carcinoma in situ and the more common ductal carcinoma in situ. Both are non-invasive neoplasms, limited by the basement membrane. Left untreated, they may become metastatic. This concludes the overview of Chapter 2, Epithelium and Exocrine Glands. Thank you for watching.